traveling a lot of us have visas now mm -hmm. so you're traveling and you know in terms of your packaging in terms of your marketing we mm -hmm. have to change our culture right um tap into those programs go on the website i myself would have fold out one of exxon mobile's um application to do business with them and one of the things i did i asked the expert what are the tools what are the equipment that exxon mobile uses and for example okay. in my field of printing they made it clear that we we use xerox machines and so i have started to align myself right, bringing in xerox trying to understand how xerox products work because you have to you know you have to go and get the the information and so they have to be more proactive they have to go out and listen engage be a part of training programs and read a lot right and i believe only then we will be able to overcome some of the and challenges yeah. and benefit yeah, and, and get the benefits you talked about a lot of foreigners coming in and it reminded me of something is there currently a tourism product in linden and, and mm -hmm. is it something is it or might be more than one thing or an activity mm -hmm. that we can develop on and you know benefit us because over the years the fact is let's be real over the years we've allowed a lot of the things that can really benefit us and do good for us to fall by the wayside yeah. are there tourism products in linden that um i believe yes linden has potential um i saw some photos on facebook the other day um a guy posted some pictures with his blue lake for example. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was Barbados. I was like, because he brought all of these, the, the, the skis and all of these things, and he had them and there. I was like, no, can we just transform this? Put safety first, mm -hmm. ensure we have, um, because those are some minute areas. Okay. I would have engaged him. He said they have already tested the waters and everything was good. And we can build on that. We have our bauxite. We have the train that used to run there. We have the road to Brazil. Um, that passes through there. There's a lot more that can be done if we can just, you know, think of new innovative ways. We all travel, as I said, and, you know, I believe once we put certain things, put it first on pen and paper, and then we bring, a, bring it to government, I believe we can get a support. Okay. And moving our region forward. Okay, all right, there, there on. Yeah. It was suddenly a pleasure, certainly a yeah. pleasure talking with you. I don't know if thank there you. are any final sentiments you want to leave. <laughs> I just want to say thank you and long live the People's National Congress reform. Well long said. live His Excellency. A perfect uh, ending note. Viewers, if you're now joining this conversation, it would have been one with Region 10 PNCR Chairman, Mr. Deron Adams. This was his first time on Facing the Nation. I'm sure that it wouldn't be his last because I will not lose his, <laughs> his number. Um, we can bring him back as developmental works continue. I mean, he spoke from a PNCR perspective today, but when it comes to community development and growing, you know, I always say that Guyana comes first. So um, we really and truly were happy to have him. Those of you who've missed it, if you're now joining the program, um, before the end of the day, the conversation as usual, uh, for those of you who follow me on social media, the conversation will be on both YouTube and on my Facebook page a little later on in the day. Um, again, another brief program today. What we'll do is take a break, a short break. When we come back, I'll give you some information. And by that time, it will be time to wrap up. Stay with Facing the Nation.
Thanks for staying with Facing the Nation. Um, it's not a short program for you today. Well, uh, I, I, I want to once again thank you very much. Say thank you very much to Deron Adams for coming. And of course, he is uh, the Region 10 PNCR chairman. And it was really interesting to hear about all the works that um, he and, of course, his team, no one does, one does something alone, something uh, th that large, that huge. And again, another young person, it's always wonderful when a word uh, the younger folks younger people can step up in society and take the lead in a sense take the lead and do what needs to be done especially in the name of development and so forth and um regardless of what age you are you always have someone more than one person a group of people an organization or whatever looking up to you to ensure that you do the right thing so we once again want to thank him for gracing facing the nation with his presence and uh, we also want to thank him for doing so much so much that would uh, continue to see the people's national congress reform soar not only the people's national congress reform but linden of itself region 10 and of course as a whole guyana you know once one community develops and benefits the entire country can feed off of that because at the end of the day, it is a part of our nation. And our nation has, um, we have been portrayed to some extent so often on uh, in a negative light that it is good when we get some good news and we see the development. And uh, with, with all the bad things that are happening in our society, there's so much good. And I believe at times we la we latch on to the bad things and the negative negative things that are happening and we forget those positive things and you know I always say if you're strong enough and you're good enough to criticize you're strong enough and you're good enough to congratulate when uh, needs be I'm going to do two things before I wrap up today's program of course as you know I like to break the program up into pieces and uh, try to find time to give you information I know this is already in the news in some cases, but for those of you who are watching and uh, you haven't heard, I'd like to read to you a release um, uh, from the Ministry of the Presidency. Uh, the minute I, I, I read the title of the statement, you will understand. Also, I'll also tell you about a, an essay competition, actually, that is being promoted by the Indigenous Peoples Commission. But before I get to that, um, this statement from the Ministry of the Presidency, uh, it came out yesterday, again, for those of you who haven't heard or seen. And then I know sometimes the newspapers would edit some statements. So this is just to read verbatim what came out of the Ministry of the Presidency, specifically uh, the Office of the Minister of State. Statement by Minister of State, the Honorable Joseph Harmon, on PPP's shameless attempt to draw attention away from malfeasance charges against Singh and Brassington. In a move that is a clear attempt, and remember I'm reading this from the Ministry of the Presidency, in a move that is a clear attempt to, to draw attention away from the malfeasance charges that have been filed against former Minister of Finance, Mr. Ashley Singh, and former Chief Executive Officer of the National Industrial and Commercial Investment Limited, NISL, uh, Mr. Winston Brassington, the People's Progressive Party yesterday, of course, filed private criminal charges against two government ministers. The charges that were filed against the current and former Minister of Public Health is the PPPC's cowardly attempt to draw public attention away from its own sordid record of corruption while in office. The PPP is aware that more charges are soon to be filed against the high public officials who served under the Jagdeo and Ramitar administrations. These charges are a result of months of intense investigation by commissions of inquiries and evidence gathered by the Special Organized Crime Unit, SOKU, of the Guyana Police Force. The nuisance value of today's legal action is just, this This should have been yesterday's legal action. Remember, this was filed yesterday on Thursday. That would have been the 19th. Is just another attempt by a political party, the PPP, that is aware that investigations have revealed that during its tenure, the nation was losing billions of dollars each year through 
procurement fraud and other corrupt activities by senior public officials. The Guyanese public will not be swayed by the legal shenanigans of the PPP, which in effect make a mockery of the legal system. This government, meaning the current government, will continue to take necessary steps to ensure that those who held public office and engaged in malfeasance while in office are brought to justice. We are sure that in the matter before the court, the actions of our ministers will be vindicated. Again, this is a statement that came from the Ministry of the Presidency. The statement was released yesterday regarding all of the, I sometimes I like to call it um, the hubaloo in a circus, regarding all of that about uh, Minister Lawrence and Minister Norton and all of that. Sometimes we just go on the road, we just go down the road and allow people to go down the road of um, unnecessary. But again, it's freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of speech. This is a democratic nation, even though, you know, we were only reminded that it's a de democratic nation maybe about three years ago or so. So I guess people are free to do what they want, even if it means, you know, making an entire circus of themselves. So. That statement came from the Ministry of the Presidency regarding that, of course, in favor of the current administration. And it really and truly was a good opportunity that the Minister of State himself used to debunk, as according to the statement, shenanigans that are coming from the other side, which I often don't like to mention on this program. Now on to a pleasant note, something that our young people can benefit from. I'm going to, go, I'm going to try to read the entire flyer, so to speak. It is the Indigenous Peoples Commission. They are inviting all secondary school students to participate in a national essay writing competition. The date of submission for those essays would be on the, the latest date would be on the 27th, April the 27th, 2018. The topic, the Amerindian Act number no. 6th of 2006 and its current relevance to Amerindian villages and communities, villages slash communities. The essay should consist of at least 3,000 to 3,500 words. Handwriting should be legible. I'm smiling because I remember those days when I entered uh, these essay competitions. I'm not ashamed to say I've never won a single one of them. But, you know, it's fun. It, it, it increases your brain power and it expands your vocabulary because in order to write an essay such as this one, you have to do the research. Um, you have to be well read and it's good that it is something local because it is teaching you again about you know um your country again the topic the amerindian act number six of 2006 and its current relevance to add um to amerindian villages slash uh, communities the essay should consist of at least three thousand to three thousand five hundred words of course handwriting should be legible now to the part you're all waiting for what are you going to get it's always about what are you going to get the first prize one one <laughs> laptop plus a trophy, plus $100,000. Think about the amount of books you can buy with that money. The second prize, one notebook, one trophy, along with $75,000. The third prize, one tablet, one trophy, along with $50,000. And three consolation prizes, one tablet, plus $20,000 each. So you see, you don't necessarily have to win it to gain from it. So you can win, you can get uh, the money, you can get the trophy. And at the same time, you're also learning about your country. Um, to give you some more information, those of you who would wish to enter, or you wish to have your child or your children enter this essay competition, um, they can make contact with their schools, the RDC and Village Council for further information. All entries must be endorsed by the head teacher of the school with an official stamp from the school affixed with. All entries must be addressed to the Indigenous Peoples Commission, that's at 66 Peter Rose and Anira Street, Queenstown, Georgetown. No late submission will be accepted. And again, the date of submission is the 27th of April, 
2018. For those of you who follow me on social media and you missed everything that I've just said, I'll try to uh, share it on um, my Facebook page a little later on in the day. But I hope you get your child or your children to take advantage of that. It's always good when we have positives and we hear about positive things that our younger ones can get involved in. Of course, these are the things that keep them going and these are the things that would indeed make them productive adults uh, in society. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have with you this week on uh, Facing the Nation. We'll be back next week. We'll have another great guest. We'll be back with another informative program. As usual, I'll give you some updates as we go along. For those of you who also follow my program, Conversations in State, that more or less focuses on all of those departments that fall within uh, the Ministry of the Presidency. Of course, that will be on tomorrow at 4 o'clock on NCN. That's on Channel 11. You know, every time we have a, an opening, we bring some of those conversations that we, we have on conversation on stage. Sometimes we bring them on Facing the Nation. I know last week you saw the conversation with the CEO of the Gaming Authority. So continue to follow us. Um, again, our aim is to give you as much information as we possibly can. Um, information that really and truly um, is about the positive developments happening in our nation. I am Alike Ramsey. This has been Facing the Nation. Be good Guyanese citizens. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And of course, thanks for watching.